Greetings, ASA members. Our legislature is back in session. And along with the recess bill and the ELL bill and the lunch shaming bill and the 301 bill and the funding the ACT bill and more than three dozen more already on education. Let's instead of talking about those, let's go to Governor Ducey's proposal for funding education which she presented at a press conference a week ago Tuesday. If you want to read that proposal in detail, last Friday's Capital Communique, which you all received, will give you more details. But here's a summary of some of the important points. First of all, 100 million in fiscal year 19 for district additional assistance, $100 million. That's uh, more than we had planned to run a bill for. It does not, of course, make up the years and years of underfunding and cutting district additional assistance, but 100 million is a start, a modest first step. Other K-12 programs in his proposal for fiscal year 19, 88.1 million in debt financing to construct new schools, and actually five new schools. Three of those new schools are in the Chandler Unified School District, one in the Queen Creek Unified School District, and one in the Tolleson Union High School District. Five schools, 88.1 million. 51.8 million for building renewal, and that will be through the School Facilities Board. So yes, the School Facilities Board stays in your life. 34 million for the second year of the promise, remember last year, the promised teacher salary increase. Even more importantly though, last year's 1.06% plus this year's 1.06%, he proposes to move both of these into the base so they become part of the formula, they're permanently there, and even further, they are then subject to the required inflationary increase that will go on year after year after year. So promised. Finally, two million to fully fund joint technical education districts. So that would bring back funding the ninth graders. And they're going to start by doing so in the three largest JTED districts, which would be West Mech, EVIT in the East Valley of the Metro Phoenix area, and Pima. Those three districts were chosen because one half of all students, all JTED students in the state attend one of those three districts. So that's where they are starting. And finally, results-based funding. Yes, it's continuing again at 38 million, the same as last year. The proposal had been, it would be based on the A through F grading system. That has been changed. It will be calculated the same as it was this last year. Your district needs to be in the top 10% of AZ merit test scores. And of course, if you're above 60% free lunch, you get more per student, 400. Then if you're not above 60%, then you get 225 per student for those results. Speaking of A through F, the recent Technical Advisory Committee, which is continuing to examine various aspects of the formula, well, they heard a report from two researchers on risk factors in high stakes accountability systems. Yes. And how many risk factors are there? Seven to be exact. Basic demographics affect test scores. There's one we hadn't thought of. Family and personal background characteristics. Parental involvement. The student's academic history. The student's behavior history the teacher perceptions of that student's capabilities. That's one we can control. And finally, characteristics of the school. So those seven factors hugely influence test scores. Now, getting specific, in those seven factors, there are 21 potential at-risk variables, meaning variables that can really diminish a student's academic performance on a standardized assessment. 
21. And how many of those can we control? One or two. So there you have it. But at least the committee is considering those things and researchers are advocating that the formula as well as the committee needs to consider those variables. Okay, let's go on to some opportunities. The State Board of Education is looking for a member of the Certification Advisory Committee. This member must be a principal, and that committee provides input to the State Board on certification requirements. Principals, this is an opportunity for significant impact and input on Arizona teacher certification. It does involve monthly meetings. The application for this is attached. Secondly, the Governor's Office is looking for members of a School Bus Advisory Council. People who are interested in serving on such a council. The positions are available for transportation directors, for administrators as a whole, from medium, large and small districts, for a bus driver, for a private school bus services that may be hired, and for fleet managers. So, Contact me if you're interested in serving on the Governor's School Bus Advisory Council or if you have personnel in your district who would like to do so. Okay, a couple other opportunities. The ASA elections are coming up in March. If you want to be an officer in our organization or in one of our divisions, it's time to give that serious consideration or to encourage your peers to become educational leaders as well. Upcoming events, our division meeting, Monday the 22nd, that's next Monday, we'll be streaming that as well, but important legislative issues, important academic issues, all will be considered. The elementary division conference for aspiring principals, remember, is Friday, February 2nd, still time to register. And consider your colleagues, your elementary principal colleagues, your middle school principal colleagues, your secondary principal colleagues, for nomination for the NASSP and NAESP Principal of the Year. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. Millions of dollars are being proposed by the governor and as Senator Everett Dirksen, late of Illinois, once quipped, a million here, a million there, pretty soon you're talking real money.